Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out Unraid. So let's get started. So this is my first impression of Unraid. I actually never used it before and I gotta say it's really good. Now what first started as an operating system for NASs, like free NAS or true NAS now, it developed itself into something completely different with a lot of community support guides and a ton of things that you can add onto this through their app store. It makes this so impressive. What I like about this the most is how intuitive it is. I actually did not have to Google much to figure out how to operate this operating system, unlike XCPNG, which I did a video on earlier. So all in all, I am very liking this system, especially how the UI is. Now, now, I never really checked out this operating system until recently, and that is due to the fact how I don't like the boot media. I always wanted to check it out, but I wish it was like an ISO so I could just boot into a VM and test it out. But no, this requires a USB stick, and when you do register the product or you purchase the product, it will be locked to that USB stick. So you gotta make sure you don't lose it. In my case, I just have it installed in a USB stick. I don't plan to keep it on. I do wanna purchase another one of these sanders and stick it on here and use it forever. This is definitely a testing environment environment before I switch it over to something better. Now let's jump over to the desktop. Now the first thing you see here is the Unraid dashboard. I did do a little tweaking with this and I added the Dracula theme which is something I thought it would be easier to do but it isn't but it wasn't all out hard. It was just a matter of installing their plugins. Now this isn't a video about how to set this up. You do have to uh, set up your array and set up your disk and everything but this is more just like showing you guys what I have found out through first impression. Now, I do like how everything is laid out on the dashboard and you could see uh, what operating system you're using, what kind of CPU, what motherboard, everything that you need to know. And you could tell that I am actually using the Zima Blade, which has the J3455 at 1.5 gigahertz. Now, this is not an impressive CPU, at least to say. Unraid could fare well with a lot better setup, but for now, this is what I'm using for testing. Now, I do have two hard drives installed onto here. Uh, which is disk one and disk two, which they're two terabytes each, giving me a total of four terabytes. And if you are using Unraid on 6.12 and on, you do have the option to install ZFS, which is something I do plan to play with. But for now, like I said, this is just a demo. This is just a test until I get really familiar with it. So if you guys know of any like plugins, which is a must have to install onto this, let me know down in the comments below because I want to check those out because I know there are, definitely is a lot of plugins that you must have on this. At first glance, um, over here just tells me what I have going on, but you can't really do much in the dashboard. You do have to use the tab menus, which is what I noticed. Now you do have to set up your shares and I did have a little bit of an issue setting up my shares when I first played around with it. I didn't know that you actually had to enable this as export. I was like, why can't I get my shares working? I can't see anything. It's, it's because of this little export. As soon as you hit yes on this, uh, your shares just show up. Another thing that I noticed is that when you go in, there's no way of really setting permissions. So when I first installed a Docker, it created these folders for me, which I wasn't able to transfer anything into because of permission issues. And I thought I had to like navigate around here so I could set permissions, but there's really nothing you can do here to set the permissions. What you have to do is actually go into tools and then go to new permissions and then fix it through here. I'll actually rewrite all the permissions of the folders so you are able to write onto them again. So be sure to have either the folder already made or be able to use this new permission uh, program right over here. Other than that, those were the only problems that I've noticed. Now setting up my theme, all I had to do was head over to settings and uh, install theme engine, which you can find in the app store. And once you have theme engine installed, you can go in here and modify the stuff that you need and then uh, get it over to the theme that you want. For me, I'm using the Dracula theme from uh, Theme Parks, which is another website I think I could show you, Theme Parks, which is this website right over here. It'll actually show you how to get Unraid set up uh, with the theme engine and how to get it up. And then there's community themes or themes that you can actually just choose. And like I said, I like the Dracula theme, so I actually just chose this. And you can actually add this onto multiple things, not just Unraid. Like if you got radar, sonar, or even Plex, you could actually add the uh, Dracula theme using their methods, which is really cool. I never knew about that. Now moving on, after you get Theme Engine set up, 
This is how Unraid looks on the dashboard, which is a purplish and whitish dark theme, which is by far one of my favorite theme settings. Now moving past the settings, there's a bunch of things you could do over here. So you're gonna have to play around with it. I do like that they integrated UPS settings in here. So if you do have this attached to a UPS, you can manage it through this website. Um, plugins is also another thing that if you install plugins like the theme engine, it'll be here that you configure and you can install uh, plugins manually if you have it somewhere in your system. Now, Dockers is another thing that I was playing around with, which I thought was pretty interesting. It does show you like similar to what you would have in Portainer, uh, your ports that you're expanding, the volume mappings that you have. Do you want to auto start it or not? But you can actually still click on here and go into other tasks. Like I, if I want to go into console, it'll pop it up and I could just, you know, browse right through the console. Or if I needed to go into here and edit my settings, I could go in here and add more volumes. What I had to enable was dev.dri just to enable uh, transcoding through my GPU. But that was very easy to add into. And what I do like is that I didn't have to guess anything. I could just go in here and select what I needed and eventually it'll pop up with dev-dri. So a lot of this stuff is actually very easy to manage compared to TrueNAS where nothing was laid out and you have to manually guess everything. Moving on to VMs, I didn't have anything VM installed yet because this only has eight gigs of RAM, so I didn't want to bottleneck it with installing a VM while doing this demo, but adding a VM seemed to be very easy. You just go to add VM, click whatever you want. Say like if I wanted uh, Debian, where is this? Debian right here. And I actually load everything up here and then you could just continue finishing up your settings and get this all started. So it was pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So I, I didn't have to Google much to figure out what I needed to do. So I really like the fact that everything's just laid out. If I need three CPUs, two CPUs, and knows I can't put 16 because I don't have a 16 core CPU in this. Now moving on to apps, where which is their bread and butter. They have so many apps on this. Now, most of which is Docker. So you can actually do a Docker install without having to use Unraid, but they have everything all incorporated into here. And if it's official, like this one, it will actually have an official stamp on the top right, knowing that it's actually approved by Unraid to install onto Unraid to work. So it's really cool how they have so many apps here and you could go in and dig up whatever you want. Now, if I go into plugins, these logos change. You see how this little icon becomes like a puzzle block? That means it's a plugin and it goes into the plugin section. It integrates somewhat with Unraid instead of having to run a Docker on top of. And I do know that there is a lot of something called the CA and then whatever plugin it is. And I do want to discover more of that which is community applications, I think, or community something. And it integrates well within the Unraid's uh, ecosystem and it helps you manage your ecosystem a little bit better. So I am going to start digging up these uh, CA programs to see what I could do with them. But yeah, there is a lot. If I go into media servers and I'm looking for some sort of like Plex or um, Jellyfin or something like that, you'll be able to find something in here that is worth it for your system. Now, if you can't find something in here that you need, you can always go to Docker and add your own container through here and manually type out what you need. You know, the repository that you need, what it does, what port you need to open. So you can actually just manually install Docker. And if you want, you can actually install Portainer in here and then add the Pi hosted templates and add more Docker support if you need to through that. So it's really impressive on how easy it is to navigate around, how intuitive it, it is for me to understand how to manage everything. So I, overall, I really like the system and I see why a lot of home labbers use Unraid versus the free options that are available. It's just so much easier to navigate. And then here we have tools, which I showed you a little bit about the new permissions and then you have system devices or system drivers. And if I plan to install a graphic card onto the Zima Blade, I could actually pop it into here and look at the system devices and install the drivers and stuff. Now, as far as the pricing plan goes, it's actually very reasonable. Now, I am on the free trial right now just to test out the operating system. So I have like unlimited Pro, I can add as many hard drives as I want, but they are limited to what the pricing plan is to how many attached storage devices. So if you are installing this on like a QNAP or a TerraMaster or just a PC, mind how many attached storages you're gonna be using, then that's the price that you're gonna be paying. Now you can upgrade from this to this without having to pay the full price. You can just upgrade it and pay the difference. They do have some sort of like upgrade plan over here and it'll tell you like, oh, if you wanna upgrade from basic to plus, it'll be $39. So you're not paying the full, full price at all. And really depending on your setup, $59 with six attached storage, which is most of the time that I'm gonna be using, like maybe four storages or five, 
um, $59 is actually a pretty good price. And if you want unlimited, then you just go for the $129. And this is all lifetime. It's not like a monthly fee. So I get the idea. I also love the fact that uh, anytime I Google something for Unraid, their forums come up with a lot of answers that I need. Like originally when I was playing around with uh, the Docker on um, Jellyfin on how to get the GPU, it was right there in front of you. You just had to pass that graphic card over and then it'll be able to run it. So be sure to check out their community forums that they have on their website. They do have a lot of stuff mentioning what you need done. And I found a lot of this stuff also on Reddit. So they, they have an Unraid Reddit section where you can actually just look up a lot of the information that you need. But mostly, I want to be able to get this system up to what my Proxmox was doing a couple of weeks ago where I get uh, Jellyfin, uh, sonar, radar, and all this other stuff. And I want to see how easy it is to get everything all tuned up. But I do want to switch over to a ZFS RAID system so I could play around with that as well. But for now, if you guys are new to Home Lab, I highly recommend using this operating system because it just makes sense. It just works. So if you guys have any must have applications that you got to add to this, like plugins or apps, let me know down in the comments below because I want to check them out as I'm learning this operating system. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And that same minority cave, hack till it hurts.